Harsh Shringla, Foreign Secretary, is speaking at the moment. Let's cut across. The curfew uh, during the day yesterday and today, uh, our mission had advised, had issued an advisory um, proposing that our students uh, and uh, community members leave Kiev, use trains, use different options to leave Kiev. Um, I understand that since then, um, all of our nationals have left Kiev. Um, we, um, um, the information with us is that we have no more nationals left in Kiev. Nobody has contacted us from Kiev since. Uh, all our inquiries have revealed that uh, each and every of our nationals have come out of Kiev to the extent that we can tell you. Uh, um, so um, I'm talking about citizens. Um, we have also um, understand that uh, another 1,400 of our citizens who were in this southern town called Zaporizhia, which is also in an expanding conflict zone, uh, have also uh, departed and moved uh, towards uh, the western borders of Ukraine. Um, on the Moldova border, another 400 students have been able to cross through uh, into Moldova and are in shelters there arranged by the MEA team that I had mentioned last time is in place in Chisinau, facilitating their movement uh, from there to Bucharest. Uh, even as we speak, uh, the embassy office in Ukraine uh, is being set up in Lviv, uh, which will em enable our embassy teams to spread out to the border areas of Ukraine with uh, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary and Romania. Uh, the idea is that they will be there in person, they should be able to facilitate and assist uh, our citizens uh, who are trying to um, exit uh, uh, Ukraine into each of these uh, countries uh, and leave, uh, you know, the conflict area. Um, we have also sent additional teams. Uh, I think we have sent another 25 officers to all of these uh, four missions uh, neighboring Ukraine to supplement uh, the very uh, minimum staffing that we have in normal course. Um, you are aware that uh, the Prime Minister has sent uh, four senior cabinet ministers as special envoys to each of these countries, uh, and uh, they are already either on their way or in place. Uh, and of course, uh, these uh, teams that are there will also supplement all of these efforts that are on the way uh, to assist our citizens in crossing over and also uh, their stay and facilitation in the countries concerned until we can get them on a flight uh, back home. Over the next three days, uh, 26 flights have been scheduled to bring out Indian citizens. Apart from Bucharest uh, and Budapest, airports in Poland and the Slovak Republic will also be used. Uh, we will mount as many flights as required. Uh, a C-17 Indian Air Force aircraft is also, is also expected to fly out uh, uh, tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. Uh, and uh, reach uh, um, Romania. Um, where uh, it would also uh, bring back, uh, repatriate uh, our citizens who are there. Uh, we will be also, um, in the course of the next few days, uh, mounting more uh, Indian Air Force uh, flights to bring back our citizens. Um, I had also mentioned uh, humanitarian assistance to, to Ukraine at the, at, at the request of the Ukrainian government. Um, a flight left this morning carrying the first tranche of humanitarian assistance to Ukraine through Poland. Uh, the, con the consignment comprised uh, medicines, medical equipment, other relief material. Uh, another flight tomorrow will carry a second consignment, also through Poland. And besides medicines, uh, we have a number of other items that are also there, uh, which are all uh, for the use of uh, uh, humanitarian use uh, in Ukraine. Um, are you aware that Prime Minister yesterday had spoken to his counterparts from the Slovak Republic and Romania? Uh, to uh, seek their assistance in continued support to our evacuation efforts. Uh, he has just now spoken uh, to the President of Poland in a similar endeavour. Uh, he has also received calls, um, and this, was, this happened as we were at the meeting, uh, from the President of France and the President of the European Union Commission, uh, Charles Michel. So in, in a sense that, uh, you know, we are certainly uh, reaching out uh, diplomatically uh, to all concerned 
to ensure the safety uh, and security and protection of our citizens uh, in Ukraine. Um, I think we have uh, examined every possible option. Um, the safe uh, passage that we are seeking uh, is, is very, very important. I'd emphasize to both the Russian and the Ukrainian ambassadors the importance of uh, providing this uh, uh, corridor, this uh, uh, option uh, to enable our citizens to leave uh, Kharkiv and Sumy. Uh, and I think uh, the ambassadors uh, recognized uh, the necessity of getting um, our citizens out of this uh, conflict zone. And uh, we will be in touch with them uh, in this regard. Um, thank you very much. Uh, sir, look, I will take a very few questions. I saw your hand first. We'll take four on. Okay. Sir, I'm Manish from TV9 Bharat World. One thing I don't understand is that we are watching the videos that there are all the exit points on the border. There are several students who are connected to the country, whether it's Romania, Poland, or Yazir, all of them are saying that we are ready to take it. फिर आखिर दिक्कत क्या हो रही है क्यों स्टूडेंट्स एग्जिट पॉइंट से बाहर नहीं निकल पा रहे क्या यूक्रेन साइड से कुछ प्रॉब्लम है उस पर कुछ अगर आप क्लियर कर सकें सर यू यू मेड टू एम्बेसडर्स रसिया एंड यूक्रेन व्हाट इज देयर एस्योरेंस आर दे गोइंग टू कोऑर्डिनेट फॉर गिविंग अस सेफ पैसेज एंड � whole country is at war, why they are blocking the people from going from Ukraine to another country? Uh, sir, about Naveen, according to the information that you have, what exactly happened to him? Uh, and secondly, is there any effort to get the body back? as his father has requested, and I think the chief minister has also said he's trying to do that. Is, uh, is it feasible to get that done in the situation that we are now? Um, Foreign Secretary, just wanted to ask, thus far India has abstained from all resolutions uh, that have been seen as criticizing Russia. In the, in the aftermath of today's incident where an Indian student has been killed in what appears to be Russian shelling in Kharkiv, is India reconsidering its position at the United Nations? Thank you. Madam, yeah. please introduce yourselves, I notice. Yeah. Sir, Paul Meek from India today, uh, you mentioned about our team being positioned at Belgorod in Russia, which is about 100 kilometers from Kharkiv. What is, what is the problem that we're encountering in having a safe passage towards Russia to get our students out from Kharkiv, from the eastern side? Last question then. News 18 India, sir, Neera Susar, you said that about 4,000 people are in Sumi and Kharkiv. There are some people from Kharkiv who are out of our knowledge, who are out of our knowledge. तो अगर आपने उस बॉर्डर पे लोगों को लगाया है टीम भेजी है तो फिर वैसे छात्र जो अभी भी कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि दूसरे हिस्से में जाएं तो उन्हें कोई खतरा नहीं क्योंकि सौ सौ लोग जो हमारी जानकारी में निकले हैं वो भी हो सकता है कि वो भी किसी डेंजर जोन में आ जाएं थैंक यू थैंक यू सर ओ जो हमारे नागरिक यूक्रेन से बाहर निकलना चाहते हैं पश्चिमी की तरफ तो उनको क्या तकलीफ हो रही है और क्यों निकल नहीं पा रहे हैं तो जैसे मैंने कहा कि ये जो बॉर्डर क्रॉसिंग्स हैं इनमें से पांच लाख लोग निकले हैं जब से कॉन्फ्लिक्ट शुरू हुआ मतलब 24 फरवरी से आज तक पांच लाख यूक्रेनियन नागरिक वहां से निकल गए हैं और फॉरन नेशनल भी काफी है जैसे हमारे नागरिक हैं काफी और भी नागरिक उस बॉर्डर पॉइंट्स पे हैं तो इस यहाँ की प्रॉब्लम ये समस्या ये नहीं है कि हमारे नागरिक निकल नहीं सकते किसी टेक्निकल या कुछ और कारण के वजह से प्रॉब्लम ये है कि वहाँ पे क्राउडिंग काफी हो रही है लाइन बहुत है वहाँ पे आ, आ, आप समझ सकते हैं कि यूक्रेनियन बॉर्डर गार्ड्स के काफी और भी मतलब कंसर्न है अभी तो युद्ध चल रही है वहाँ पे आ, तो इसलिए डिलेज हो रहे हैं पर ये हम कह सकते हैं कि हमारे जो नागरिक पश्चिमी की तरफ पहुंच गए हैं कम से कम उनका सुरक्षा 
जो युद्ध चल रही है उनका सुरक्षा तो थोड़ा सा बेहतर है अगर आप कंपेयर करें कॉन्फ्लिक जोन से तो इसीलिए हमने हमारे जितने भी नागरिक कीव में थे जितने भी हमारे छात्र छात्रों कीव में थे उनको सभी को हमने ये सलाह दी ये सुझाव दिया कि हम ये पश्चिमी की तरफ आएं और ये वहाँ से जब भी मौका मिले एग्जिट करें और काफ़ी ऑप्शंस एग्जिट करने के लिए हैं हंगरी की तरफ जा सकते हैं स्लोवाकिया की तरफ जा सकते हैं रोमेनिया पोलैंड जहाँ भी एग्जिट हो सकता है वहाँ से एग्जिट करें और मोल्डोवा भी पाँचवा रूट खुल खुल गया है तो इस प्रयास में आप देख सकते हैं सात हजार सात सौ हमारे नागरिक निकल गए हैं वहाँ से इन रूट से आ, तो ये मतलब आप देख सकते हैं इतना छोटा फिगर नहीं है दो हजार तो निकल मतलब वापस आ गए हैं और चार पाँच हजार वहाँ पे एयरक्राफ्ट के लिए इकट्ठे हुए हैं और मैं जैसे मैंने कहा छब्बीस फ्लाइट्स शेड्यूल्ड हैं आ, जो कि अगले दो तीन दिन में आ, इन देशों में जाके हमारे लोगों को वापस ले आएंगे तो ये पूरी तरह प्रयास हो रही है कि जितने भी हमारे नागरिक यूक्रेन में हैं उनको जल्दी से जल्दी निकाला जाए यूक्रेन से और उनको घर वापस ले आए दे वॉज अ क्वेश्चन हाँ अबाउट इमिग्रेशन प्रोसेस सिमिलर क्वेश्चन आई थिंक द थिंग इज दैट देर इज नो इंडेवर टू ब्लॉक आर सिटीजन फ्रॉम कमिंग आउट अगेन आई थिंक द इशू इज लॉजिस्टिकल देर आर ह्यूज क्यूज ऑफ पीपल देर आर यू नो लाइन्स ऑफ व्हीकल दैट आर एट द इमिग्रेशन बॉर्डर पॉइंट्स ऑफ पीपल ट्राइंग टू लीव अ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट जोन एंड ऑफकोर्स यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट बींग अ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट जोन देर इज कन्फ्यूजन ऑल्सो देर इज नो क्लियर कट कंट्रोल इट इज नॉट अ नॉर्मल टाइम दैट वी आर ट्राइंग टू Uh, you know go across a normal uh, peace time crossing it's a difficult uh, zone and in that context uh, i think uh, we are doing our best possible as i told you um, our embassy uh, in ukraine has set up office in Kiv- uh, in lviv lviv will give them easy access their team should fan out to all these points to assist our people within western ukraine on the other side of the border our ambassadors and their teams are waiting Uh, they are doing everything possible to intercede with the local authorities to speed up that process and facilitate our the exit of our citizens the prime minister himself has spoken to the presidents of uh, slovakia of uh, romania of uh, poland so in a certain sense uh, uh, it has been taken up at the highest levels uh, he has spoken to the president of ukraine as i mentioned to you uh, so every effort is being made uh, to make sure that our citizens uh, can come out uh, as uh, speedily and uh, as uh, you know without a, with with minimum inconvenience um i think uh, one question was about uh, navin and uh, you know his about safe safe passage yeah well you know um it is a fluid situation uh, we have absolutely strongly and emphatically asked them to create this safe passage uh, but there is a war going on and uh, we will have to make uh, the best of a situation that we can you know um, find a way um, i think uh, that our uh, interlocutors both in russia and ukraine understand that and we will try and uh, uh, continue to press them uh, to enable us to uh, withdraw and evacuate our citizens in good order um now navin of course uh, you know uh, he was a fourth year uh, medical student at the national kharkiv medical university um he had uh, from what we understand from his friends had come out uh, to buy some groceries he was at a shop and a line uh, when he was hit i don't know how i mean the circumstances is not absolutely clear but uh, uh this is uh, obviously there is a fair amount of uh, you know uh, i would say it's, it is a conflict zone and uh, it's a very unfortunate uh, situation his body has been taken to the morgue in the university uh been identified um did uh, speak to his uh, parents earlier today in karnataka conveyed our deepest uh, condolences um, and of course uh, i think uh, we uh, will uh, not only try and evacuate our nationals from that area 
uh, from that conflict zone as soon as possible, but also bring back uh, uh, Naveen's uh, local authorities. So we are in touch with the local authority in that regard as well. Now, um, how did I think one question was, uh, you know, some of our people have exited uh, from Kharkiv, 100 people have taken a train to the west. Uh, uh, others also tried to take it, but they could not because the circumstances prevented it. Because it's, as again, I want to emphasize, it's not a static situation. It keeps changing all the time. And, uh, you know, there were risks associated. They went back. Uh, again, we have also emphasized that, uh, you know, to the extent possible, stay safe and stay secure. There are bunkers, there are shelters. It's important to stay uh, safe uh, until there is a possibility that we can evacuate you from that uh, that uh, difficult area uh, um, in a conflict zone. And there was a, I think... Well, you know, in the United Nations... Uh, uh, we take positions uh, that are based uh, on certain very careful considerations uh, and uh, certainly um, we um, do regard uh, the merits of each and every case that come before us. Uh, there are a number of resolutions that have emanated from the first, uh, um, you know, first resolution that was an aborted process. Uh, uh, there is now uh, the second but a third resolution in the Security Council is a resolution of the UN General Assembly, and we will consider all of them, uh, you know, in 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 its in their entirety and take decisions uh, in our best interests. Uh, well, um, I think Palomi's question was that uh, is there a problem in Belgorod? Um, the, the point is that uh, Belgorod is the closest city uh, to uh, Kharkiv in that area, which is why we are, uh, our team is positioned there. Um, at this point of time, uh, I think it is planning and contingency planning, preparing for that eventuality, uh, when, which, we, which we hope will be very soon when our people can exit these areas. Right? I mean, they, whether they exit westwards or they exist e eastwards, we should be prepared either way, and we are making plans uh, whichever way is possible. Wherever there is an opening, wherever there is, a, uh, you know, uh, that option presents itself, I think we will uh, seize that moment. Sir, Thank you. Well, the problem is uh, the ongoing conflict. I mean, you know, there is a fairly intense conflict as, as we speak. Uh, you have been watching it uh, on television. Uh, we have been getting reports of that conflict. That conflict is intensifying. And uh, whether it's in Kiev or in Kharkiv, and we have to see what we can do. Uh, just trying to get our people in the heat of battle uh, while it rages may not be the best option. I mean, we have to make sure that uh, both the uh, you know uh, sides uh, are sort of uh, in a position where they can offer us a safe passage. That's what a safe passage is all about. And we are working to secure that option. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate sir, your presence. I know it's late in the evening. Thank you very much for joining us for a special briefing. We'll continue to bring you updates as we can. Thank you. Good evening. All right, so that was the press conference by Harsh Fringla, the Foreign Secretary, giving us details of India's evacuation plan. So over the next three days, 26 more flights have been scheduled to bring Indian students back. At the same time, a C-17 aircraft is expected to fly out at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning and will be reaching uh, Romania. And uh, the government is ready to increase more Indian Air Force flights in the coming days. In fact, we are also being told that uh, okay my colleague Shrinja Chaudhary is now joining us in the phone line for more on this. Shrinja good evening so 26 more flights are scheduled over the next three days a C-17 is expected to fly out to Romania at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning yes uh, you're right 26 more flights which means if you put two 200 people 250 people per that uh, per flight uh, you have a lot of people flying out but the most important and most significant uh, announcement that we've got now is the fact that there are no more Indians in Kiev. And that's a very reassuring thing for Indians because uh, it's going to be the eye of the storm over the next few days. 
there could be a lot of heavy fighting in, in that area. The fact that there are no more Indians there is actually perhaps very good news for everybody. All right. Thank you very much, Rinjoy, for the moment for joining us with all of those details. We'll keep coming back to you for more on this. Priority is to bring uh, the remaining Indians as well who are still in parts of Ukraine back home safely. Uh, with this, we will slip into a very, very short break on urban debate, but there's lots lined up for you on the other side as well. Stay with us.